Now, let us suppose that we're in a very low pH situation. Very low pH. Let's draw what this would look like in a very low pH situation. So we have to find anybody who might protonate or deprotonate. So we have to start here with this nitrogen, should this be protonated. Yeah. I mean, so should we go through and find the PKAs of every single one, or just? Well, we won't need that in a second. So yeah, we might as well have done that at the start. That's right. That actually would have been a better start. I should have done that. Before worrying about this very low pH, let's write down everyone's PKAs. So let's write down everyone's look PKAs. look at each one's individually. That's right. So we're going to need to start with the PKA of this nitrogen group over here for glycine. That's 9.6. So what happens to the OH, the carboxylic acid group, on the glycine? It's just gone? Yep, it's gone. Because remember, in order for one amino acid to bond to another one, the carboxy has to attach to a nitrogen. In fact, uh, if we had more time, we would show that reaction. You need to know the reaction that forms peptides, but uh, we're, we're not really going to make it anyway, so we're going to leave that out. That was, that's just the reaction we talked about last time. Right, and so we're not going to be looking at that COOH, the carboxylic, because it's not there. We're not looking at the PKs. There is no OH here anymore because but, it's been replaced okay. by the peptide bond. That's right. You should know how this peptide bond was formed, but we won't have time to talk about that today. But once the peptide bond is formed, even though we're still calling this the carboxy carbon, it doesn't have an OH group anymore. Now, glycine does not have an acidic or basic side chain, so we move on to aspartic acid. Aspartic acid does have an acidic side chain, so we need to find this PKA. Mm, what about the NH? Ah, yeah, that's, all right. Yeah. So, let's back up. Taking a look at this nitrogen, what type of functional group is this nitrogen? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, it's an amine. Our M means basic. Yeah, that's yes. very important. Amines are nucleophiles and bases. That's something we've been talking about a lot today, that amines are nucleophiles and bases that like to donate their lone pairs. So that's the whole reason why this has a PKA. The whole reason it has a PKA is that it has the possibility for it to participate in acid-base reactions. Now, what type of functional group is this nitrogen in? It's an amine there. This was the amine. And this is the amide. We call it peptide bonds are amide bonds. Peptide bonds are amide bonds. Amide. That's right. Peptide bonds are amide bonds. Now, are amide nitrogens basic? No. No. That was the whole resonance argument. You said that it's electrophilic, yeah. I mean, they're not, well, they're not basic a because there's a, resonance, there's a resonance structure where the nitrogen has a positive charge. Yeah. Did they have nitrogen. to make the words so similar? Like, right. Okay. Well, they, thought, they probably thought they were doing a good job because in some ways these are similar, so it makes sense they should have similar names. So therefore, we're not going to be looking at any of its qualities because it's not... We're not going to worry about any acid-base reactions. That's right. And it's not a side chain, so we're cool. We just That's right. Know. So this is the key thing. Um, originally, aspartic acid had an N-terminus. But it no longer has an N-terminus, so to speak, or no, 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 it no longer has an amine group, because that's been amalgamated into the peptide bond. Mm -hmm. So as long as the nitrogen is an amine, it can be basic. But when the nitrogen forms a peptide bond and it forms an amide, it's no longer basic. So only nitrogens that are only the nitrogen, say, that's at the N-terminus here is still basic. All the nitrogens that have formed peptide bonds are not basic anymore. All the nitrogens that have formed peptide bonds are no longer basic because they're no longer amines, now they're amides. That's why it was so important earlier that we get clear in our mind that amines are basic and amides are not. Because we're gonna see lots of problems with both amines and amides. That's great, thanks. So if you look up aspartic acid in your table, it will give you the PKA for the N-terminus, but we're not gonna apply that here because this is no longer an amine group. So we don't even care about what this PKA is. We're gonna completely ignore this PKA. And by the same token, um, obviously this used to be a carboxy group. It used to be a carboxylic acid, but obviously this is not a carboxylic acid anymore, so we can ignore its pKa as well. We're not going to pay attention to any of the pKa's of any of the carboxy carbons or the nitrogens that are forming the peptide bonds. We don't need to pay attention to any of the uh, pKa's for any of the nitrogens or carbons forming peptide bonds. And for nitrogen, our reasoning is like what you said, right. it's a positive charge, but for the carboxylic acid, just it's not present. It's the That's right. Nitrogen. It's obvious that this is not acidic because it's lost the OH group. 
Okay. It's lost the acidic hydrogen. It's not as obvious that this is not basic, but there's that resonance structure argument to show that this is not basic. Okay. So, moving right along, when we looked at glycine, did we have to look at the pKa for its nitrogen? Yes, we yeah. did, because this really is an amine. There's no side chain. Do we have to look at the pKa for its carboxy group? No, because that's in the middle of the chain here. Now we're going on to aspartic acid. Do we care about the pKa for the N terminus? No, because now that's an amide. Do we have to look at the pKa for the side chain? Yes. So we need the pKa for the side 7. chain. 3.7. Do we need to look at the pKa for the carboxy terminus for aspartic acid? No. Now remember, this is not part of the main uh, structure. This is the side chain. Again, this is why it's so useful to keep labeling the alpha carbons and put this all in the horizontal over here. We know this is the side chain because it's a dead end. There's no peptide bond attached over here. All right, now here's the carboxy end of the aspartic acid, but we don't need its pKa because it's lost its acidic mm -hmm. proton. We don't need the so I think we're done with the aspartic acid. Does that yeah. one make sense? Now going on to the lysine, we don't need the pKa for this nitrogen because it's an amide now. Now, does the lysine have an acidic or basic side chain? Yes. So we have to look up the pKa for this side chain. 10.5. 10.5. And then the carboxylic one is 2.2. And this carboxylic acid we do need to look up because this has not turned into a peptide because it's the C terminus. So at the terminus, we still have this carboxy group. So we do need the pKa for this. This was for lysine. So this was 2.2. How many pKa's did we end up with overall? I think we ended up with four. One, two, three, four. Right. Okay. So we only care about the N terminus or this. Oh, well, we only care about that. Well, anyway. Okay. Yeah. Sense. And if and essentially, if he gives us pH, sorry, if he gives us pH values, then we apply the same thing as we just did the past mm -hmm. hour in terms of just that's right low or higher. Right. So like in this case, because you, you said a very low pH all of the NH, so that, that will be NH3+, plus, mm -hmm. and then that one up top will be NH3+. Plus. That's right. Basic. Perfect. That's right. So now, if he tells you what the pH is, you should be able to draw the structure of this tripeptide. If he tells you the pH, you should be able to figure out wh which of the, wh whether the, uh, in which cases the pH is low relative to the pKa, and in which cases that pH is high relative to the pKa, and then you can put in all the charges. So that would be the way to draw the correct structure with the charges here. All right. So we we're going to try to see how to figure out the PI, the isoelectric point here. Now there's a trick. The trick is start by imagining a very low pH. This is just a trick for figuring out the PI. We're going to start by imagining we have a very low pH. You start by imagining a very low pH for our goal of figuring out the PI. So let's draw what the structure of this would be for a very low pH. Who needs to get a proton here? This nitrogen needs a proton. Mm -hmm. This is already good. This is already good. And this nitrogen needs a proton. Basically, we just, just look at everybody that has a pKa number next to it and see whether we need to change its structure. So what would be the net charge on this molecule at a very low pH? If the pH was very low, we'd have a net charge of plus 2. Now we're going to imagine gradually raising the pH. We're going to imagine gradually raising the pH. Well, as we gradually raise the pH, eventually one of these things is going to lose a proton. Who's going to lose a proton first? This one here. It'll turn into this. And then what will the net charge be? Plus one. And what's the threshold where we pass from the plus two to the plus one. What's the threshold pH where we pass to uh, having mainly this and not mainly this? 2.2. 2. 2. 2. 
If the pH is less than 2.2, this will be the predominant form. If the pH is greater than 2.2, this will be the predominant form. And if the pH is exactly 2.2, we'll have about equal amounts of so these we, two forms. But that's still not the Zwitter. That's true. We still have extra work to do. We still, and we always start with that very low pH, which can be like coded as everything's protonated. That's right. Okay. As low as for everything. We just imagine that the pH is low enough to make sure that everybody is protonated. This is just a trick for figuring out the PI. Okay. You imagine that you have a very low pH, and then you imagine what would happen if you start gradually raising the pH. Mm -hmm. So does everyone agree with our steps up to here where we got the, P, the plus one? Now we're going to imagine continuing to raise the pH. Well, if we continue to raise the pH, another of the functional groups is going to deprotonate. Who's going to be the next functional group to deprotonate? This one over here will now deprotonate. And then the net charge would be here. So that threshold is 3.7. That's right. If the pH is less than three, a little less than 3.7, this is the major form. If the pH is greater than 3.7, this is the major form. And if the pH is exactly 3.7, we have about equal amounts of these. Okay. 